Hey guys, City Walk City Wall here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make an animated sign for City Skylines. We're here in Blender, and first thing that we're going to do is enter the edit mode, and I'm going to make this sort of big. I'm making mine in this shape, but you can basically do anything you want. Once you have your shape, the next thing you're going to want to do is separate the surfaces that are actually going to be animating. If you right click and do separate selection, it made a new object up here. So it's just the surfaces that I'm animating now. And if we go up here into vertex paint mode, we can select everything and set vertex colors to be black. And this is how the game reads what to animate and what not to animate. If we go back to the other piece and go to vertex paint there, we want to make sure that that's all white. So it should look like this, where your animated parts are vertex painted black and your non-animated parts are vertex painted white. And now if we go into object mode and select both of the objects and do command J, it'll combine them back into a single piece. And if we go to vertex paint, we can see it's still separated out with the sides being black and the top being white. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to go into the UV editor and unwrap this. So we're gonna make a new UV map and we're gonna make it 1024 wide by 512 tall. And it's gonna be a UV grid and we can click OK. So because the top and the bottom are gonna be the same, I'm gonna select both of them and hit U to unwrap and they pop up over here. So I'm gonna put them on top of each other, make them a little closer to the actual aspect ratio that it is. Next thing I'm gonna take these long sides and unwrap those and put them up here on the top of the UV grid and the same with the shorter sides. So U for unwrap and unwrap them. Now that we're done UV unwrapping, I'm going to open up Photoshop and create a new Photoshop file that's the same dimensions as my UV map. So it's going to be 1024 wide by 512 tall. And in Blender, we're going to go to UV, export UV layout, and then drag that in to Photoshop. And I'm going to make a folder called diffuse because we're going to start with a diffuse texture. So I want the top and the bottom to have sort of a metal grate texture. So I'm going to bring this one in. So once we have something in this Photoshop file and it's saved, I'm going to go back to Blender and go into my object and go over here into the materials tab. And I'm going to set the material here, its base color to be a image texture. And then I'm going to open an image and it's going to, I'm going to open that up PSD file. And if you go up here to the top right and click uh, this little guy right here, it'll show you your texture. So this is what I've done so far. So it's all linked up and working correctly now. And I'm gonna go back in Photoshop and just do the other part. So now that that's done, we can go back in Blender and update that. And looks like one of these side, two of these sides is upside down, so that's easy. You just flip it around in the UV map with the R button for rotate, and then holding down the control button to rotate in increments. So we'll go back into Photoshop and make the other textures that we have to. So next one that I know I for sure want is an illumination map so that this sign will glow. And for this, uh, white means it's fully glowing and black means it's not glowing at all. So you just uh, do a texture over the top of your diffuse texture that would match that. So this entire bottom section is not gonna be glowing at all. That'll be black. And the top section, I kinda wanna be glowing in the exact way that it looks here. So I'm just gonna take all these layers, merge them together, and make them black and white. So that'll be our illumination texture. We also should do a specular texture for shininess because this top is probably gonna be a little shiny since it's metal. And for this, white is extremely shiny, like a glass surface, and black is not shiny at all. So for this bottom part, we'll do just a little a touch over black, and the top is completely black. And lastly, we'll do a normal 
texture, which is sort of the bump map. And uh, for that, I just want this metal to be a little bit bumpy. So for this, what I'll do is I'm gonna take the metal texture and duplicate it up. And I'm just gonna make like a background here so that this bump map doesn't think that the edge of this is like something that should be part of the bump. So I'm just gonna do that and then merge these two together, go to 3D filter, 3D, generate normal map, and just kind of like play around with these settings so it doesn't look too harsh. And so this is our normal map. So that's all the textures that we need. And now we just need to go through and export everything. So we'll start back in Blender. Because this model has only 12 tries, I'm uh, not gonna make an LOD version of it, but I am gonna export this twice uh, once as the main version, once as the LOD version. If your model has more than 12 tries, you should probably make a separate uh, LOD. But for now, I'm just gonna do this. Uh, so you go to Export FBX, make sure that your object is selected, make sure that right here is checked Selected Objects, and we're gonna export that. And then we're just gonna do it a second time. But this time, at the end of the file name, we're gonna write underscore LOD and export that. And then back in Photoshop, what we're gonna do is we'll start with the diffuse. And real quick, I'm just gonna add a background to this one too, just so that we have something on all the pixels. And I'm gonna go to File, Export As, and I'm gonna export this uh, 1024 by 512 height. And this will be our regular diffuse texture, so it's gonna be underscore D for diffuse. And I'm gonna do it again, but this will be for our LOD and we'll do a much smaller size texture for our LOD. So for this, we'll do 128 by 64. So this will be much smaller. And you wanna make sure that it's the same proportion as your main texture. So this is 1 8 the number of pixels in both directions. Click export. And for this one, we'll do underscore LOD underscore D for diffuse. So we just have to do that for the other three textures. So illumination, export this 128 by 64. So this will be our LOD. So this will be LOD underscore I. And again, 1024 by 512, and this will be underscore I. For specular, it's underscore S. And lastly, the normal, which is underscore N. So now we have all of our textures and our exported .fbx file. So what we're gonna do is select all of these, except for the UV, copy them, and we're gonna paste them into our import folder, which uh, if you look at the top here, app data, local, colossal order, city skylines, add-ons, import. That's how you get to it. Paste it there. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is go to the Steam Workshop and make sure you don't have anything subscribed to. You can also um, load up cities without workshop entirely. Um, if you go to Ronix69's website, there's some instructions there how to do that. But I do it by unsubscribing to everything and then subscribing to my modding and assets creation collection here, which is just a couple things. But most importantly is mod tools, which we're about to be using here in a second, and the Anim UV Params mod. And we'll open up the game. Okay, so we're gonna go to Editors, Asset Editor, New. This is gonna be a prop, so we'll hit Prop. Really doesn't matter which uh, template we choose. I'm just gonna choose this first one. We're gonna find the asset that we made. And this came in rotated wrong, so I'm gonna head back to Blender real quick and just rotate the origin point. So if we go into object mode here, we click right here, this little guy, and check origin. We can move around the origin. This needs to be lowered just a little bit here and rotated so that Y is facing up and Z is facing forwards. So I'm just gonna re-export this real quick as another FBX re-import these two files, the FBX files, into the import folder. Just uh, replace the files in the destination, and now it's properly rotated in the game. So I'm just gonna try a scale of 100, I don't know, we'll see. Actually looks pretty good to be honest. We'll open up mod tools by hitting Control Q and going to the debug console. Now the way that the animation actually works is there's a script that you have to run here that Ronix69 uh, created. And if you go to his website, which I have linked in the description, you can find this script. 
I also have the script itself linked in the description, so it might be a little easier. We're gonna be using the prop version of the script, and there's actually two different kinds of scripts. So there's one, which is what we're gonna be using here, that's a scrolling animation. But if you wanna do a multi-frame animation, there's a different script for that and a totally different way of setting up your texture. So if you wanna do that, you can just uh, figure out how to do that on Ronix's website, he tells you how. But we're doing the scrolling animation, so I'm gonna copy this onto a notepad just so I can edit the, the values myself. So for the time, that's the amount of time that it'll take to do one loop. So let's just start off with maybe 10 seconds. And for the FPS, I'm gonna do 60 because I play with um, the speed slider turned way down so the game runs slower. So you can uh, really see when the FPS is pretty low. So I like to set it high. And this is gonna be scrolling sideways. So I'm gonna set this to true. And we'll see about reverse in a second, which way is forward and backwards. So I'm gonna copy the script and paste it here in mod tools and hit run. And if we unpause the game, you can see that we're animating here. So let's just uh, set it to nighttime, see how this illumination works. It does look like it's glowing. You can see the normal, it is a little bumpy. It's not perfect, might be a little too shiny maybe, a little too bumpy or something. I'm just gonna leave it for now, but uh, if you were really trying to spend a lot of time and effort making this perfect, you might go back and, and change some of those textures, make this look a little better. And I'm gonna go into the menu, hit save, rename it and hit save. Okay, so now let's quit the game and I'm gonna subscribe back to my mods and pop back in and see how it looks. Okay, so now that we're in game, let's search for our prop and see how it looks. This looks like a pretty good size. It's in game, looks to be animating. So there it is, that looks pretty good. I just need to go around and place it around the rest of this building, but the asset is, is there and it's done and it's animating. Uh, that's basically how you make an animated prop. It's super, super easy. It literally took me 45 minutes to film and make this. So uh, it's not so hard. You just need Blender and a photo editing software. If, if you don't have Photoshop, uh, GIMP is free. So you can download that for free and do this entirely for free on your own. Hopefully this inspires uh, some of you to make some animated billboards and things because I personally don't think there's enough animated props on the workshop. There could be so many, not even billboards animated anything. So be creative with it. Try and come up with cool things to animate. This is how I made the animated conveyor belts. And I think there could be a lot, a lot of stuff that is like conveyor belts where cool props could be animated. So I encourage you guys to learn Blender and start making assets because this game can only get better with more assets. Anyways, that's it for me, City Walk, City Wall. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. I'll see you all next time.